What's up guys, it's Nick, and this is the third of many videos in a refit series about our boat Risqué. So we're refitting a 1969 Coronado 25, and this video in particular is gonna be just about the whole process of sanding, painting, priming, prepping everything involved in making the inside a little bit prettier. So the first video in this series was uh, just all the prep work and establishing our goals and budget. And the second one was some of the fiberglass stuff and reviewing our budget. And this one is gonna be, of course, the the bulk of the work here, which is painting. And we're shooting for a classic yacht look. We're gonna do it as cheaply as possible. And uh, let's dive right into it. ceiling in here is uh, I'm just gonna start when I paint I'm just gonna start obviously from the ceiling and work my way down there's no point in doing the floor and then doing the top and having something drip on your your freshly painted floor or something you've already completed so start at the top this is all gonna be painted white and the paint that I'm using is that uh, petite easy coat paint it's an interior cabin paint that is mold resistant um, which is what I want but it's pretty specific on what it can apply uh, what you can apply it to so uh, you can't apply it directly to wood, so these bulkheads, you know, the ceiling and a lot of the things in here that get it painted white, I can't just put some primer on it and I can't just hit it with some, uh, with the Easy Cabin paint from Petite. So what I have to do is seal the wood first and I actually have to wait a day for it to dry. So that's kind of what we're going to do first. So we're going to seal all the, the decks and the bulkheads that are going to be painted white in the future. So that's step one.
apply the first layer of primer. Actually, the only layer of primer. So once the primer's on, it's going to fill in any gaps, any, uh, any indentations, you know, just little, little imperfections like this. And after the primer dries, we're going to sand it with some 220 to make it nice and smooth for the first layer of paint. It's going to get two layers of interior cabin paint. So, but we got to start with the ceiling. So our boat is real small. It's very hard to work in these little tiny spaces. I'm in the sunshine now. It feels really good. Hubby's still down finishing up with the last of the paint, at least for the first coat. When he comes up, I'm going to get a picture of him. He has aged. <laughs> Even his nose hairs turned white because of the paint. No fucking patience with your shit today. Huh? No fucking, like, just the amount of shit that can go wrong right now that is, is just blowing my fucking mind. Okay, so uh, I went out to uh, continue the paint on the boat, and uh, it is just not working out the way I wanted it to today. Uh, got up, got started, got the truck packed, put the air compressor, everything in there, drove all the way out to the boat, hooked everything up to the air compressor, air compressor was broken. Uh, it, it would not shut off once it got to pressure, which is bad, so it means it overheated last time uh, when I was spraying last time. So, uh, long story short, um, I have to go buy another air compressor, which is actually what I did now. It's already in the back. It's in the back of the truck. So I'm heading back out there right now and uh, with a $300 air compressor. Um, so that's not going to come out of the budget. Uh, that is just the tool that I use for lots of things. So that's just another tool that's going to be replaced in my garage. But I do need it for the boat, so it is being bought right now. Uh, but it's not gonna be part of the boat, boat budget. Um, I'm gonna try not to let this piss me off because I have a I have like five, six more hours of painting to do. And, I'm, and now I'm in a bad mood, so. Um, I really just want to get back to the boat and get back to it. Ugh. Money.
Okay, so that is, let's see, that's about, let's just call it 15 ounces of paint. So I need to add 10% water, because this is a water-based paint, to thin it down enough to put through a spray gun. And I always use distilled water, so there's no particulates. Pretty thin. Let's check this. Okay, lots of time to do. So this is how we started with just primer and then we're spraying. This is the first coat. I think it looks good. Hubby's doing a good job. A lot of effort has been put into painting this boat the right way or the way you're supposed to paint, okay? Um, I followed the instructions to a T and something you guys might not know about me is after I got out of the Marine Corps, um, I did a couple of different jobs, you know, and that ranged from everywhere from bartending to brewing, but one of them was painting professionally and not just painting houses or anything like that. I painted the F-18s in VFA 122 uh, in Lamore Naval Air Station, I was hired by a civilian company that had a contract with the U.S. Navy, and uh, we did lots of different things depending on what shop you were in, what department you were in, uh, what your job title was, but my job uh, was a painter. I was with the corrosion department. So my job was to identify corrosion, sand it, paint it, make it look professional again, and we use HVLP guns. And uh, so I have a lot of experience with HVLP guns, and that's why I was really looking forward to painting this boat with an HVLP gun. But let me tell you, at no point in time has the HVLP gun performed the way I expected it to. Um, I've got years under my belt with it, and I just could not get this thing to work. No matter what the pressure I set it at, no matter how big the fan was, no matter how much volume I dialed the volume knob down to, I, no matter what I thinned the paint to, no matter how much air I allowed into the gun, no matter what I dialed, um, dialed back on it, I just don't feel like this Easy Cabin Paint by Petite uh, was really meant to be sprayed. Um, even though it's water-based and you can thin it down, and even though I did spray, um, I really just don't think it was meant for that. Uh, everything about that gun just didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. And finally, after dealing with the air compressor and after dealing with the paint gun and trying to fit a paint gun into small spaces, I just said, fuck it, and I'm deciding to roll. Now, that bothers me because had I just come to that decision, I would have saved myself a lot of work I'd have saved myself a lot of money, and uh, the budget would be looking different right about now. So, uh, like I said, I'm having a long day. I'm halfway through this paint project, and it's getting it's getting to my last little bits of my patience because uh, I've made four trips back and forth and back and forth uh, just to get this paint gun dialed in because the air compressor broke. Now the paint gun wasn't functioning properly. The paint's not coating properly, so I'm back to using, you know, a $4 roller and $8 worth of little foam brushes, and I should have just been doing that since last week. Uh, it would have saved me a big headache today. Uh, anyway, so uh, you guys didn't see it, but I chucked I chucked that paint gun through the yard, bounced it off a rock, and now it's in the trash, and I wish I'd have just done that a week ago. The other thing that's bothered me with this is uh, I'm in the middle of a dirt field, which is not conducive to painting, so i got to clean all this shit out. So that every time we need to do something, we have to walk through the dirt up this ladder, which takes all the dirt onto this gel coat and puts all the dirt into here. And I really can't have dirt in there when I'm painting, so uh, this shit's got to go. And I'm, I'm just sick of every day I come out here and it's like someone emptied their dustpan inside the boat. So it's, it's just really been a big pain in the ass to paint.
Okay, so I've got two coats of paint up on these walls and on these walls over here, two coats of paint on the ceiling. And what I still need to do is like the deck and uh, kind of the bulkheads and stuff underneath the dinette, which is right here. So this stuff, you see where I fiberglass here um, in the last video, but I mean, this stuff is just constantly being stepped on. It's constantly dirty. And it's, it's really just been just the biggest pain in the ass to keep clean because I'm in the middle of a dirt field. So, I mean, you can see I can't paint like this. So I really got to just protect the dirt from even, get, even getting up into the cockpit. So uh, this has been a huge obstacle. The other obstacle is um, the amount of paint we're using. Sprays better than petite out of an HVLP, yeah, that's for sure. can of paint. I have about two or three days for the painting to go. I don't have that much stuff to do, but it goes fast. Um, I got to put one more coat here, one more coat there, two coats into the, the quarter berth area, and then two coats on top of the cabinet. And this stuff is not cheap. So every time I run out of paint, I got to buy more and it just digs into my budget. It also adds five to seven days for it to get to my house. Like I've said before in other videos and like I've said a million times, I do not live in a sailing community. Coming across the right type of paint for a sailboat is not easy. I've had paint being shipped from Rhode Island from Jamestown Distributors because I like that company. 
Um, fingers crossed I get this done without adding more paint or waiting another week because I got a lot of electrical to get working on and I'd like to get working on it here next week. So I'm in full blown paint conservation mode. This is just coming down to like, if I gotta buy another can and pay for shipping and wait another seven days, it's gonna add a week. It's gonna just add another 50 bucks to the budget. Like I'm trying to spread this out as much as possible. I'm not even gonna paint this little strip here because it's covered by a board, so there's no reason to paint it. I hate the way that looks when I'm painting it, but that's it's fine. So I'm just gonna try to get through this. And you might be wondering why I'm not painting the floor. Okay, for those of you that don't remember what the book looked like or doesn't know this yet, but uh, there's gonna be carpet here. So the floor is covered. And uh, I've no, I've never, have this boat without carpet in it. Uh, I'm not going to have this boat without carpet in it. So, uh, and I got the carpet for free from Rick. So it's just more money saved, less area I have to paint. All right. Oh. This is getting to look a lot nicer in here. Um, just the white itself is just a lot brighter. All I got to do now is the top coat of this countertop right here, and then do an inventory of the paint. Okay, so I'm all done with the paint in here. Um, I still have about this much paint left in my very last can. I definitely could have done the logistics better. I'll get into that more in the budget. For now, I'm gonna go home, wait for this paint to dry, and then tomorrow I'm gonna come back and peel it all off. So what do you think? Did the paint turn out good? Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not the world's best paint job, but it's, way overkill for what I'm trying to do with this boat. You know, it's not the world's best fiberglass job, it's not the world's best paint job, and it's definitely not the world's best woodwork staining job, but I am pretty much done with this. Well, it looks cleaner. It doesn't look like it's 1969 in here anymore. Yeah, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna pull all this off, get all the tape off, and uh, and call the, the the paint job finished so we can get into the electrical. Yeah, I don't want to varnish this. But it's the varnish isn't peeling off like it did on that other I stuff, right? I, I don't even care if the varnish peels off like it did on the other stuff. Um, I've spent a week varnishing. That's, okay, so I spent a week sanding. I cleaned, sanded, Cleaned again, dried off, varnished, then sanded, then varnished some more, then sanded. And the wood was so old it actually absorbed most of the varnish. So then I sanded some more, then varnished, and then sanded some more and varnished. And as of right now, I mean, I'm, I'm four coats into some of the woodwork, and it's still not that perfect shine texture on the top. I can still see spots where it absorbed and other spots where it didn't. And, uh, and to be honest, I, I'm just eating through varnish i'm eating through paint brushes and rollers and all this other stuff and um and, and in the end it ends up looking exactly like it did when i started so i'm i'm kind of calling it quits on the varnish uh it's not it's just simply because it's time to get into the electrical i'm not doing this i'm not doing this for another week because i've done everything in the garage so far i'm not about to start that whole week-long process over for this board and this board unless it just bothers the shit out of me. And it doesn't, because this is my day sailor on the on the lake. This isn't my full-time live aboard boat. And it's uh, it's been a fun little project. I'm trying to keep it fun. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to do this all summer. I'm trying to get my boat back on the water. As of right now, it is March 12th, 2022. I'm not about to spend, you know, all of April when I could be sailing on the lake. So
this place turned out not too bad. Now, if you remember the picture I showed you earlier in the video, this guy right here, I definitely wanted a darker wood. I definitely wanted the shiny mahogany color. And the more woodwork we did in the garage and the more woodwork Bertie and I did, uh, the more we realized that it wasn't worth our time to do it. We are trying to get this boat back into the water before it gets to be 110 degrees here. I'm in the Central Valley. It gets stupid hot. I'm in the high desert. So I really just want to move on to the electrical. And you know what? It's so bright white in here. I'm okay with this being the same color it has been. And I'm not going to varnish the inside of this stuff the way I varnished all the wood that I took out and took to the house. Because you know what? Ultimately, it ended up looking just like it did before I touched it and spent all the money on it. So the varnish and all the stuff and the, the miscellaneous brushes and rollers and all that stuff, all that money that I spent on wood treatment stuff that came out of the budget is a wash. And that's why I think it's a good time to kind of go into the budget now. Okay, let's talk money for the project so far. Uh, we did spend a little bit of the 3500 original budget on some fiberglass materials, but for the most part, I had all of that stuff on hand. So we're still sitting pretty at $3,445.95. So let's go into all the stuff I bought. I'm not going to include anything that I already had on hand. For example, sandpaper, HVLP guns. Um, my buddy Rick was nice enough to let me use um, some clear coat varnish. And uh, I really wish I didn't have to go into the stuff I wasted money on, but I did waste some money on some stuff. Uh, a for effort, F for judgment for sure. So um, let's just go into the paint, the primer, uh, the wood sealer, and and just the bulk of the different types of paint we use. We use rattle can, fabric paint, um, easy cabin interior marine grade paint, uh, wood sealers, and the primer that went on after the wood sealer uh, for any of the bulkheads that were actually a wood material and not the fiberglass material. So that cost $339.88. There was a shipping and handling, obviously. There was taxes and there was even a hazmat handling fee. And it came from Rhode Island all the way to California. Uh, I won't even go into why I did that. Uh, but basically that added another $65 to the budget or the, the expenses. So it brought the total and things that I had to pay for to $404.88. And then there was also some miscellaneous things, extra brushes, extra rollers, extra paint trays, um, paint thinner, stuff like that, uh, another 60 bucks. So that brings the total to $469.88, and that is coming off of the original amount that we had left over, which brings um, our budget down to $2,976.07. So that's the amount of money that we have left for the rest of this boat project. And it, it sounds like a lot, but it, it really isn't that much, because mind you, uh, we still have to do the CDI furling system is going to go on the the head sole, where the head sole is when we're replacing it with a furling system. So the furling system itself has to be installed, that standing rigging stuff, it's almost a grand. And then the furling sail itself can be well over a grand. So um, I gotta be very careful with the rest of the budget because I still have to get the gangway systems, the marine grade wire, the fuses, the the, uh, the electrical fixtures, the depth sounder, all of that's gonna come out of this this $2,900. So, and, and, and I still have to pinch pennies enough to buy the fabric material for the seat because I'm not putting those cushions, but I'm not putting these 1969 cushions back into this now beautiful white boat. So that's not gonna happen. So uh, lots, lots to, lots to do with very little budget left. So it's gonna be penny pinching from here on out. I hope you enjoyed the video of the painting and all the kind of interior work that we've been doing so far. It has taken weeks and weeks uh, to, to get this done and let paint dry and all that stuff. And, and then another couple days to just edit this video and put it all together. And uh, so if you like the video, be sure to click the thumbs up. It helps me out a lot and lets me know that I'm doing something right, at least since YouTube took away the dislikes. And uh, the next video in this series is going to be the fun part, the electrical. I'm going to build the brains of the boat. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell and turn notifications so you don't miss out. These videos work well for people who are refitting a smaller boat. I mean, anything under 30 feet, you're definitely going to want to check out the whole playlist. Uh, let's get out of here so we can work on the electrical.